Now back to the new bombshell book that President Trump calls phony and full of lies and sources that don't exist. Author Michael Wolff in Fire and Fury depicts a president who never intended to be president, telling his former aide Sam Nunberg at the beginning of the race, quote, I can be the most famous man in the world. And also quotes Nunberg widely saying of Trump, he's just an expletive fool. And then there's an incident where Nunberg talks about trying to explain the Constitution to Trump and quote, I got as far as the Fourth Amendment before his finger is pulling down on his lip and his eyes are rolling back in his head. Well, Sam Nunberg is here with me now. You've been asked about these quotes. You admit that you said those things, but you say the full context of those quotes weren't actually put in to the book. But Absolutely. still, and but by the way, I'm not still. criticizing Michael at all. I sat with Michael. I cooperated sure. with Michael. We all sat and cooperated with Michael. But this doesn't make the president look good, even if you, even mm -hmm. if it wasn't the full context. You said those things. I, had, I had, first of all, calling calling the president a fool. I'm sure he's going to be very upset about that. He's called me much worse, and I've probably called him much worse in the past. I wouldn't take it literally. As he tweeted earlier today, he, he's the one who got elected. He does it his own way. He's a very, very stubborn man. And I mean that in a good context. He's somebody where it's not that he doesn't know what he doesn't know. He knows what he doesn't know, doesn't think he needs to know it. He doesn't and, worry about what he and doesn't, doesn't know. And doesn't worry about it. And, and then we'll get people to cover that, to is take care of that. But, but how, do you, how do you interpret that? Is that a, is that a good thing? Look. My, my position is, and I'm a supporter of his, I'm a, I voted for him, my position is we had somebody, his predecessor was very cerebral, he was an academic, he was editor of the Harvard Law Review, and you know what? I didn't like his policies. I didn't like the way he came down on issues. I like the, the judges that this president has appointed. I like, and I don't think he gets proper credit for, where, what he's done on foreign policy. I agree with him on Iran. I agree with him on standing up against North Korea. So. Things, things like that, I mean, it, he is what he is. He's a businessman. He's not an academic. Well, That's about this issue of mm -hmm. his intelligence and, and uh -huh. his mental fitness, I mean, that has been raised by this book, the questions, and he, the author of this book, was Michael. asked yes. about this portrayal of the president uh, when he talked with Savannah Guthrie on the debate Today Show yesterday. Let's watch. One of the overarching themes is that, according to your reporting, everyone around the president senior advisors, family members, every single one of them questions his intelligence and fitness for office. Let me, let me put, a, put a, a marker in the, in the sand here. 100% of the people around him. Jared Kushner, his son-in-law, Ivanka Trump, question his fitness for office? E every time I, I uh, and, and, and I want to be careful about who I spoke to because the nature of this kind of book is you kind of grant everyone a veil. But Having, having said that, um, certainly Jared and Ivanka, in, in their current situation, which is a, um, in a deep legal quagmire, are putting everything on the president. Not us. It's him. What do you make of that, that he just said 100 percent of the people he talked to question his intelligence and the president's mental fitness? Well, I've never personally questioned the, the president's mental fitness. And as we were discussing off camera, now I know what it felt like when you were a Democrat and you were supporting Barack Obama and we were going Republican saying he wasn't born in Hawaii. I look at that as this, they're gasping for straws here, that this is their way they're going to be able to take him out. And I think it The questions of his fitness. Yeah, and think I think it motivates the Democrat base. I think it motivates the Democrat base. And it's a tactic and a strategy which works. I, you know, I understand there were some... Philo there were some psychiatrists that came to the to, to the hill to uh, talk Dr. to Dr. Bandy Lee, who was the Yale Gee, I wonder who they voted for. Who was brought on to talk about the <laughs> I wonder who they fitness. voted for. But right? back to the book. There's also yes. this. I want you to hear this oh, sure. from Michael Wolf. You said that these senior people insult his intelligence. What are the kinds of things people would say? They say he's um, a, a moron, an idiot. Um, actually, there's a competition to sort of get to the bottom line here of who this man is. Let's remember, this man does not read, does not listen. So uh, he, he, he's, he's, like a, um, he's like a pinball, just, just, just shooting off the sides. Now you again, you <laughs> yeah. mentioned it too, we, we read yes. it earlier, you said he is a bleeping fool. Do you regret saying that? Do I regret saying it? No, I have a big mouth. I don't really regret saying it. I've over. He said much worse about me, and I've said much worse about him. But that does point to his intelligence. I would not say, but he's an extremely intelligent person. I wouldn't take it literally. 
that I said he's a fool. I call a lot of people a lot of names. He's very, very difficult to work for. So if we go to the Constitution anecdote, and first of all, I wasn't teaching him the Constitution. It wasn't in the proper context. Perhaps I wasn't clear to Michael. We were going over issues that could have been gotcha questions for the first debate. Now, I'm working with a guy who he's leading the primary. He's the number one national front runner. You can't turn on CNN. You're not covering him. And he's going before the first debate to his property in Scotland. And I had to get in there, and I was trying to go over some things. Because with he him. wasn't worried about it. He didn't want to prepare for it, you're saying. He didn't want to. But you know what? And here's something where I remember he said to me once, he said, Sam, something you're not going to understand. And I'm not quoting him literally. I'm quoting, I'm just. You're just he said, paraphrasing. Paraphrasing. Sam, you're not going to understand. You, you have to communicate things in a way that people can understand them and care about them. And he was right. The reality is, and this is a longer issue, a deeper issue, is frankly, the average voter does not care about the Seventh Amendment. The average voter, voter does not care about dicta or the rationale from a Supreme Court case. He was right about that. And when okay, you go so back, I want to get yeah. back on track, though, in terms of just sure. talking about this book. And, mm -hmm. and I get your point, what you're saying, in terms of it really doesn't matter necessarily if the president was preparing for this debate in a way right. that most people would expect him to. But back to mm -hmm. what we just read in this book. Now, the result of this, the president has sent a cease and desist letter to Bannon <laughs> as well as to the publisher. Which was a mistake. Now, you've been on the receiving end of one of the president's yes. lawsuits. Do you think he'd actually follow through with this? No, I don't Bannon? think he's going to follow through on this. I think that that was a, I think this is, I think this is Donald Trump not acting as if he lives in 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. He's acting as if he's back on Fifth Avenue and 59th Street and Trump Tower. This is, these are his antics that he's done. Um, I personally, and by the way, I can tell you right now, I guarantee you people around him or anybody that has a voice and wants to give him the proper a counsel said, don't do this. You're only going to help the book. And he knew that, and he still wanted to do this. Can I ask you about Bannon real fast? Sure, because we've sure. seen since the fallout of this book, uh, a lot of people are, are pushing Bannon away. The Mercers, who have been in his corner, have uh, completely come out condemning what he said in the book, mm -hmm. what he's quoted as saying. We're even hearing the, the forces kind of pushing Breitbart to dump Bannon Which from, will never from them. I mean, do you think that will never happen, I mean, at this point, is he relevant anymore? Is he toast? He's high, he, first of all, we're talking about him here right now, so he's, he's certainly relevant. And the reality is, whether Matt Drudge likes it or not, the reality is if you watch when talk radio hosts are talking, conservative talk radio hosts, they're refreshing Breitbart all day. They're not refreshing Drudge Report anymore. But does Steve Bannon Brunson, have the same kind of influence yes, now does. as he did before? Yes, he does. The Mercers could, I believe, the Mercers could want to fire Steve, could want to kick Steve out of Breitbart, and guess what? They'll end up being kicked out. Steve is not going anywhere. Steve, Steve is not deferential to the Mercers anymore. It's something I've noticed. When I used to spend time with him in 2015, 2016, the Mercers would just come up in conversations by him. And, and you know, in terms of this is their opinion and this is... He's not like that but anymore. But you don't think people cared about Bannon because of his connection and closeness to the President of the United States? You think that people give him that much, I guess, power individually? I think that for Steve... This is, for Steve, this is certainly, from that aspect, you're 100% right. It's not good, because it shows publicly what people like me have already known privately. They're not friends. They don't like each other. That is the reality. They're not allies. They are strategic partners as of now. But on the other hand, Steve can be a very, very big problem for the president if he wants to be. And the president should be cognizant of that. If, if Roy Moore had not blown that race, and Roy Moore lost that race, okay, not Steve Bannon, if Roy Moore had not blown that race, I don't think it would have been as bad, the fallout from the book, as it was now. It looks as if he's in a position of weakness.